Hey everyone, in today's video we are talking all about beginning place value and getting students to understand tens and ones. Now, this is the third video in my summer series that I'm doing right now where I am taking a math skill and just teaching you some ways to have students conceptualize the idea, build a deeper conceptual understanding, as well as some concrete activities that you can take and use with your students right away. So the first video I did was about comparing numbers. Last week's video was all about understanding patterns on a 120 chart. And today we're talking place value. Just like in my other videos, I'm going to give you an example of a lesson you can do with your students to help them conceptualize this tricky idea. And then I'm going to share three fun concrete activities that you can do with your students to help them with place value. If you're ready to see these ideas, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's just dive in. Right, teaching students about beginning place value about tens and ones is the beginning of teaching students how to unitize. And unitizing is probably the most important thing students are going to have to understand in K through two before they kind of build on to more difficult skills, right? Especially in K one, we really want them to understand what unitizing is. And unitizing is essentially grouping things to count them in a more efficient manner if we're talking about math. And with our base 10 system, it means we're grouping things into tens. As students learn more about the base 10 system, they'll realize that not only do we group 10 ones to make a 10, we group 10 tens to make a hundred, 10 hundreds to make a thousand, and so on. But our role as primary teachers is really to help them understand and get used to that idea of unitizing so that they can do it efficiently. All right, before I go into this lesson, before you would start this lesson with your students, your students should have some knowledge about base 10 blocks, um, or if you're using unifix cubes, that's fine but they should know how to represent a number using tens and ones, or at least have done it, you know, a couple times, have seen you do it. They should understand that this is a 10, these are some ones, and I don't know how well you can see this, but this number together would represent one ten, three ones, or 13. Now when having students do this conceptual lesson, I would have them work with pairs, and in their pairs, they're going to need some base 10 blocks. They're gonna need some rods here, some tens, they're gonna need a bunch of ones, um, because they're gonna show numbers in different ways. Once students are partnered up and they have their materials, I would pose to the class, I would say, using your base 10 blocks with your partner, can you come up with a way to show the number 26? Give your students about a minute to figure this out, and most of them are going to show you two tens and six ones with their base 10 blocks. Now, if you have some other students that are like, ooh, I'm gonna do it a different way, maybe they will have shown you 26 ones. Um, those are usually the two first ways, if they do a second way at all, that your students will usually show. And of course, ask your students to come up, maybe show it under the doc cam, or draw what it looks like on the board, explain it to the class, and have other students repeat what they say. Said. How did so and so go ahead and build it? Is that different from what you had or is it the same? Do you agree? Do you disagree? And so on. If you do have a pair of students that does it in a different way, be sure to highlight that. Ask the class if anybody did it differently. And even if they didn't, that's your next step. You're going to say, is there another way using your base 10 blocks in front of you that we could show the number 26 and see what they say? Usually the last way they find is that one where you have one rod and 16 ones. So here would be the three ways that your students could represent the number 26 using base 10 blocks. Once you guide your students to getting these three ways, we have some questions I want to ask about these numbers. So first we'll take a look at all three representations and I would ask the class, are these numbers equivalent? Are they equal? And students will have to figure out if all three of these representations are equal. How are they going to do that? Have them explain it to you. How can they prove or show that, you know, two tens and six ones is the same as one ten and sixteen ones? And is, are both those the same as just 26 ones? How can they prove it? Your students will likely figure out that they can go ahead and unitize those ones to represent. They can show how a tens rod really equals 10 of these ones here, that they are the same. Of course, just a reminder, be sure to ask a few different students, agree, disagree, tell me more, restate what they said. Again, using all those math talk stems that we know about to really help students understand this even further. And as a quick reminder, if you're looking for more of that math talk, that's the video to go check out. 
Make sure you have all three ways you can make the number 26 on display, whether you drew them on the board or they're under a dot cam, and then ask them, what can we say about the different number of tens we can use to make 26? And then hopefully you'll get some interesting conversations. They'll realize that there's two, there's one, there's zero, but they all equal the same thing. But then you can go on further and ask them, well, what if I take those 26 ones and how could they make them look like the other ones? What could I do? You know, they would say you can group the tens, make one 10 to make it look like the second option where there's one 10 and 16 ones, or you can continue regrouping, right? You can make another group of 10 to make it look like two tens and six ones. I talked about this before, but the importance of conceptualizing these skills is so that students are flexible with their thinking and they're flexible with numbers. This helps students really understand and see multiple ways and hear multiple different ways that tens, a tens rod, is the same as 10 singles, 10 units. They're the same thing and they can be interchanged and exchanged to show different options of making the same number. Now I wanna share I got a version of this lesson from this book right here, it's called Talk Moves. Um, I love this book for promoting mathematical talk and mathematical concepts in your classroom. And the teacher in here is a first grade teacher that did a very similar lesson to this one. When she was proposing this to her class, especially this last part about using the tens, um, one of her students asked, they were like, well, wait a sec, if I have one 10 and 16 ones, how can I write that? I can't write one 16 because that would look like 116 instead of 26. And one of the amazing things about using consistent math talk in your class and having students ask questions and talk about math a lot is that you can see where there might be some misconceptions, some confusion. And for the teacher, this was a great eye-opening kind of moment. She wasn't expecting this question about how do we actually represent it when writing. So it was a great time for her to take this opportunity and say, you know what, you're right. If we write 116, that's 116. And that's why it's so important that we unitize. Whenever we can, especially when representing and writing our numbers, we need to go ahead and group as many tens and then as they get older, hundreds, thousands, as we can to write it down in our base 10 system. So in our system, we have to show the maximum amount of tens you can make, that two for 20, and then all the leftovers, the six. After reading that in the book, if I were to do that lesson with my class, the way I explained it to you, I might even bring that up later. I might even ask them, well, hey, wait a sec, how could I write this? Just to make sure that they understand this too. All right, so that's an example of a great conceptual lesson to get your students talking about number sense, place value, tens and ones. So now let's go over some concrete activities you can use with your students. Now, over the last few years, I have shared quite a few place value activities that are some of my favorite, but when specifically thinking about tens and ones, I narrowed it down to three of my faves. First is the activity scoop and group. Now, this activity is such a great one for students to practice unitizing and really grouping items into tens. Now, for this, you can use a bunch of different manipulatives. In this picture, I used all these little shape buttons here. I even put them in a little summer pail with a little shovel, and I would have students close their eyes, they would reach in, they could either use the shovel or they can just use their hand and take a big handful. Once they do that, they need to actually count those items into groups of 10 to place them in the circles. So once they've done that, they get an entire group, and every time they get a full 10, it will go in one of those circles, and then there are some leftovers. Now in this picture, I was a little sloppy. You can see down here that little uh, red square. It should be in the group on the left. But here we have four 10, so they would count up 10, 20, 30, 40, and four leftovers to get a number of 44. Then students can put all the buttons back in the pail. They can go ahead and scoop another amount and group them. That's also a great one to play over and over again by switching up the manipulative. If you make it larger, the numbers will be a little smaller. If the manipulative is even smaller, the numbers could get bigger, so on and so forth. The next game I love that really emphasizes tens and ones in the concept of unitizing is race to 50. Now, this game has been around forever. There's race to 50 or race to 100. And I like to use this game with unifix cubes like I've shown here. Um, this is the race to 50 version. There's a player one and a player two. And all students will do is go ahead and take turns rolling a die. Once they roll a number, they will have to get that many cubes. And you can see here how the ones that are still ones, they haven't formed a group of 10 yet, are face up. 
and I kind of put them on the little mat there just to show what number we're showing. But then once students get 10, so as they're adding to their pile, once they get 10, they form it into a rod by connecting all the cubes and laying it down sideways. So then if I walk over to the groups while they're playing this and I ask them what number they have there, I would expect for them to, if I was orange, for them to say 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Not for them to count up that group of 10 anymore, but I'm hoping that they will notice that that is just a 10 and then we can add on. And like I said, I have that exact game. We always start with race to 50 so students understand how it's played, but then we also have race to 100 and race to 120 for them to play in the same way. Um, and usually, especially for 120, I'll have them use two dice um, so they can roll a little faster and they practice a little addition in there too. And last but not least, another easy activity is one you can do whole group and then move it into some partner games. And that is called What's My Value? And for What's My Value, you're just gonna show students images that look like this. This is a very simple one. It's not going to be as hands-on as the others, but I like it because it really helps students identify the value of the number in two-digit numbers. So here you'll see some examples. I have the number 30, the number 64, and the number 72. And you'll see that one of the digits is underlined. So I ask my students when I'm showing these on the board, I'll ask them, what is the value of the underlined number? Because in 30, the underlined digit is three. So what does that really mean? And I'm looking for them to tell me that that means three tens or 30. In 64, I'm asking for the value. I want them to tell me that that value is four. And a lot of times I'll actually have them represent this. So if we're doing this whole group, I will give them some base 10 blocks and they have to show me the value. Or if they're doing on whiteboards, they can draw the value and hold it up so I can check. When moving this into a more independent or partner game, just to have students reinforce this practice, here is a game called What's My Value Memory, where essentially they're just playing memory in the same way that I just showed you. So here we have 44, and the underlined digit is the four, the first one in the tens place. So in order for them to find their match, they have to find the value of that underlined digit, which would be 40 down in the bottom corner. Same with 82, the underlying digit here is that two. They need to know that the value of that is actually two ones or the two there. Now the what's the value memory cards and actually the other two activities as well, race to 50 and scoop and group, all the sheets that I showed, they're all in my place value unit right here over on TPT. I will link it down below in the description in case you wanna check it out. But just so you know, the what's the value cards, the memory cards, there's also a three digit version as well. So students can understand the value of the hundreds place too when they're ready. So there you have an entire conceptual lesson for teaching students about tens and ones and that process of unitizing, as well as three different hands-on and more concrete examples and activities for you to use in your classroom right away. I really hope you're enjoying this series. My goal in each video is to give you lessons and activities that you can take and actually use with your students. So if you're enjoying this, please let me know down in the comments. And next week I have one last video for you to continue this series. And in that video, we're moving right on to computation. So some beginning addition and subtraction and how we can help students conceptualize that. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.